Hi guys, welcome back to another Steam Free to Play walkthrough. Today we have A Warmer Shade of Summer, which is a visual novel. I don't know too much about it, but as always, I'll leave a link to the game in the description. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. Oh, baby. If it has multiple endings, I'm only doing one. Probably, unless it's short. Hey kid, wake up. Huh? What? I awoke to the empty interior of the public bus. Just an hour ago, this thing had been packed full of people, but now the only person left was the bus driver and me. Last stop is in five minutes. Better get your stuff together. Oh, right. I guess I must have dozed off. Hello? Anyone in there? I looked up at the bus driver. The old man's eyes were fixed on the road, but I could still make out his face in the rearview mirror. Hey kid, you got a name? A name? I'm pretty sure I have one of those. Oh, is my name Bo Fit? Hell yeah. The Fluffy Panda. It's, uh, the Fluffy Panda. <laughs> well, the Fluffy Panda. I sure hope you didn't sleep through your stop. For a second, I felt a wave of panic shoot through me. Wait. The last stop on this route is still Somerset, right? Yep. I let out a sigh. Then check my pockets to make sure I had all my essentials. My phone and wallet were still right where I left them. I looked in my wallet to make sure no one had made off with anything while I had been asleep. What brings you this far out? I'm visiting my grandfather's farm. He, well, he died a few weeks ago, and the farm was left to, to my family in his will. I'm sorry, kid. Always a shame when you lose a family member. So, you're heading out there all by yourself? Shouldn't you be in school or something? The college term just let out for the summer. Alright, I can never keep track of when they let the hooligans out to run amok. What's it you're studying at university? Chemistry. Oh my god, I'm a nerd. Ah, chemistry? What do you plan on doing with that? I hope to get a job after graduation. Pharmaceuticals, manufacturing, something like that. Oh, I could never get my head around any of that egghead stuff. Huh. So you're all on your own? No mom or dad to deal with this kind of stuff? They said there were too many emotions buried out on that farm. They didn't want to soil the old memories of family vacations from long ago. So what's your plan once you get it up there? Someone has to see what's left of the old property and hopefully I can find someone who will buy the land off our hands. What? Buy it? That place was part of your childhood. You want to throw it all away for a handful of cash? Well, we thought that would be better than letting the old place just waste away. The bus driver let out a sigh. Ugh. It's a shame the only thing the youngsters think about nowadays is money. Neither of us said a word for the remainder of the trip. A few minutes later, the bus came to a stop. It was too dark to make out anything past the headlights. You take care, kid. Somerset has a way with people. Some people set out to find who they are. Some people set out to change who they are. Somerset tends to show who you who you were all along. I stepped off the bus into the darkness, one hand on my phone and the other on my suitcase. I wonder what he meant by that. I sure hope I remember the way. I followed the dirt trail that led into town until I reached a crossroads. I shined my flashlight up to the wood, warm wooden sign that labeled each direction of the crossroad. Crossroads sign. North, Somerset Beach. South, Somerset Bus Stop. West, Somerset. East, Astor Farm. I guess I'm headed east. I followed the dirt pathway for a few minutes until I reached the dilapidated wooden fence that marked the outskirts of the property. I opened the small gate that leads into the farmstead and hurried towards the main house. Even with my flashlight, it was still impossible to see much of anything, but I could make out the black silhouette of the farmhouse. I made for the house and fumbled around until I found the door. All oh, right, the key. I opened my suitcase and took out the envelope that held the deed to the property in a small metal key. 
With the key in hand, I unlocked the door and fumbled around for the lights. The old house hadn't changed much since I was a kid. Two bedrooms, a decent kitchen, and a bathroom. Compared to my college dorm, it was a mansion. It is huge, it looks nice too. There's not much I can do until the sun comes up. This is a perfect place for a murder mystery. I rolled my suitcase into the master bedroom and fell face first into the mattress. I guess I'll head into town tomorrow. And with that, I fell asleep. Day zero. Oh man, that day one. That verse just popped off, bro. Is that? Huh? Someone's at the door. Oh, this is where we get murdered. Sick. Fantastic. I let out a long yawn and climbed out of bed. I made for the door. As I opened to my surprise, I met a familiar face. Huh? Eli? Wait, the fluffy panda, is that you? It must have been 10 years since I had last seen Eli. He was one of those friends you make on summer vacation, but never stay in contact with after the break ends. We used to get into all kinds of trouble when we were kids. Eli, geez, it's been years. What are you doing here? Oh, well... Last night I parked on the side of the road and saw... I saw lights on the property. I thought that was mad suspicious, so I came here to investigate. Oh, well that was me. What were you doing on the side of the road that late at night? Oh, well I'm currently a bit... Homeless? Oh. Home insolvent at the moment. Homeless, yeah. Home insolvent? Are you saying you're homeless? Ah, uh, well, more or less, my folks kind of kicked me out. But enough about me. Are you here all by yourself? That's Eli, all right. Life washed off him like water off a duck. This music's popping off, boys. Yeah, after Grandfather died, we... Well, we decided to sell the property. That's why I'm here. Is there an options? Refs? Is that options? Oh, thank God. A little bit too loud for me, boys. Voice volume? There are no voices. I'm the voices. The hell? Okay, whatever. <laughs> Man, this place is a part of Somerset's history, you know? This farm's been here, like, since, like, before I was born. Who are you planning on selling to? Not some big corp or who will pave, o pave it over and turn it into a small shopping mall, I hope. Well, it's not like that. I was hoping to sell it to a local. Ha! Huh, I knew you were a good guy. Say, how long are you in town for? Oh, all of the summer, probably. That's perfect. Perfect. Yeah, you see, I was actually talking to your granddad about renting out the garage to me. Before he, well... My granddad was going to rent you a living space? Hey man, I'm good for it, and apparently the old guy needed the cash. Granddad had money issues, that's new to me, news to me. So what do you say, I can pay you up front for three months when you'll be staying here. I don't know, Eli has always been a troublemaker. Ah, uh, come on, man. I can see you mulling it over in that big head of yours. For old times' sakes, you said I have a big head, bro. Stay homeless. Cash up front. Okay. Wait, really? Ho oh, ho, I mean. Uh, thank you? I knew you wouldn't let an old friend hang out to dry. Not to mention when that friend comes bearing the gift of a big old wild of cash. Eli then pulled an envelope from the back pocket and handed me a few hundred dollar bills. A few hundred dollars in worn rag bills. Ragged bills. You can always use some more spending money, especially in Somerset. Oh, look at my money. I'm rich. Huh? What do you mean? Ah, uh, come on, man. Don't tell me you'd never notice when we were younger. Somerset's always been a big hit with all the city girls, especially during summer break. And there's nothing city girls appreciate more than a guy with a full wallet. I'm not so sure about that. Alright dude, give me a minute. I'll pull my truck in and start unloading my stuff. Eli then walked off the porch and took off down the dirt road. A few minutes later, he returned in a big red pickup, which he parked in the gravel driveway. 
back of the truck was covered in a big blue tarp. Clearly all his worldly, worldly possessions were in the back. Alright dude, I'll start unpacking, and don't worry, I earned my keep. I'll make sure the garage is nice and cleaned up. One thing I forgot to mention, privacy is kind of a big deal for me. So if I stay out of your space, you'll stay out of mine, right? I guess I don't have a problem with that, until you start murdering people, dude. Hi, you're a good guy, the fluffy panda. I know. You should head into town when you get back. I'll have this unloaded and the place a bit spiffed up. You don't need any help? Nah, yeah, bro. You're new to this whole landlord thing, but I'll give you some advice. You're not supposed to be helpful to your tenants. You're supposed to be a major league bummer. Ha, I'm just kidding, man. I got this. Eli is just as headstrong as when we were kids. I'll meet you in town when I'm done with all this. Well, okay. Try not to burn the place down while I'm gone. Ah, jeez. You don't have to worry about me. I walked down the dirt pathway and out the wooden gate. After a few minutes, I reached the crossroads and headed west into town. The dirt pathway soon transformed into a paved road of flagstones. The city center of Somerset hasn't, hadn't changed much since I was younger. The pearly marble fountain in the center of town, the great classical architecture of the Somerset Bank, the old style general store where Eli and I would buy sodas and ice, ice cream on hot days, and of course all the local houses which had still retained their old fashioned architecture. However, not everything was the same. On the corner of the main street, there was a trendy bar that seemed like it would fit more in line with the nightclubs of the city than a small town like Somerset. The Fluffy Panda, is that you? I turned to face- awesome man. Oh. Fluffy Panda, is that you? <laughs> I turned to face the sound of the noise. It was a man standing in front of the bank. Oh. He looked at only about a few years older than me. Oh, it is you! Oh, I'm sorry, do I know you? I suppose you're too, you were too young to remember me, but I remember your family well, especially your grandfather. When I was a teenager, I used to work for him, helping on the farm during his harvest season. You knew my grandfather well? Yes. It was a shame, really, to lose such an icon of our community. Your grandfather was as much a part of the, our town as at the bank, or the beach, or the old general store. So, are you back in Somerset to settle his affairs? I nodded my head. So what do you plan to do about his debts? Debts? What? Debts? Oh, I guess you didn't know about that. Your grandfather owed a substantial amount of money to the bank, and unfortunately, due to the nature of the loans, the collateral will fall upon his next of kin. You and your family. Psych, my dude? Collateral? How? How much did he owe you? Well, I didn't handle his account personally, so I don't know the exact figure, but... Yes? Well, word does travel, tend to travel in a small town like Somerset. Last I heard, it was close to... A hundred thousand dollars... Oh. What? A hundred... A hundred thousand dollars? That there's no way we can pay that off. I'm sorry to say that any overlap will result in the bank seizing any remaining assets to make up the loss in income. Wait, are you... are you saying the bank will take the farm? Well, that's where it gets more complicated. Your fa grandfather had two mortgages on his property, now associated with our bank, and the amount tied up in those agreements is actually greater than the value of the property. We would actually lose money if we seized the property. So, if we don't pay it back, the bank will be forced to seize other assets. I have nothing. Get out of here. Other assets? The property your family owns in the city. Our house? I couldn't believe my ears. How could all this happen without us even knowing? A scam, bro. Set up. How, how long do we have to pay off the debt? The lion's sum of the debt needs to pay, be paid at the end of the summer began to feel faint as a bitter twist nodded into my stomach. I... I didn't even remember walking back to the farm. 
Bro, this is their setup, dude. This is a scam. I stumbled back into the front onto the front porch. Hundred thousand dollars? What am I going to tell my folks? I heard shuffling through the closed garage door and went around back to the side door. Oh, oh, you're back so soon. I thought we were going to meet in town. Well, hey man, are you okay? What's going on? You don't look so good. I just heard... What, man? What happened? My grandfather, he owes a ton of money to the bank. A ton? Like how much? Hundred thousand dollars. What? How did that even happen? Did he have like major gambling, major league gambling issues or something? I don't know, but I gotta find a way to make the money. The bank will seize everything. Can't you just sell the farm like you planned? Apparently Granddad had two mortgages on this place. No one in their right mind would buy this place. How long do you have? End of summer. Ha! Ha 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 ha! Ha 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 ha! Why are you laughing, dude? Has Eli lost it more than me? This whole thing, dude. Me and you. It, it's like destiny or something. Destiny? Yeah, fate. You and I will run the farm. Run the farm? We can fix this place up. We'll plant some crops. The growing season's just started. Eli's voice was filled with optimism. We'll figure this thing out together. Think we can grow a thousand, hundred thousand dollars worth of crops? No. Hey, I didn't say it would be easy. Fluffy and Panda and Eli Farm. I like the sound of that. That's impossible, bro. This is crazy. Yeah. A crazy good idea. I began to feel dizzy. I don't. Ah, jeez, man. Eli caught me as I began to stumble. Hey, man, you should lay down. Eli spent the rest of, his day, of the day unpacking his stuff into the garage. I thought about calling my parents, but I didn't think it would do any good. Is it kinder to tell them now or later? I guess they deserve a few days of summer before I tell them that we're destitute. I don't think so. I think you should probably tell them now. Maybe Eli is right. Together we have a shot at pulling something off. <laughs> Sit down in bed. Unless you're growing freaking opium or something. You're screwed, dude. I guess I really don't have the answer. A2! With our rooster friend. Is it morning already? I guess I better find Eli. Oh, hey boss, what's the plan for today? Does the general store still sell seeds? Yeah, last time I checked. Wait. Does... Does that mean we're actually going to do this? I nodded my head. Ha, just you wait. With a little elbow grease, we'll turn this place around in no time. And with that, he stretched out his hand. I guess there's no turning back now. I took his hand with my, within my own. We shook on it. Partners till the end. Hmm. A warmer shade of summer. Opium edition. Because there is no crop that you're going to grow $100,000 of with two people. So, if we're going to be partners, I think it's only fair you get to sleep in the guest bedroom. What? Really? I already set up my futon and everything. You sure? I'm sure. I'm kind of glad. Your grandpa was sorting all sorts of weird stuff in there. Big glass flask and beakers, fertilizer, big bottles of iodine. I was kind of afraid I'd get a disease in there. Iodine? Oh yeah, he used to mix that in with his fertilizer. He claimed it increased the yield of the crops. But all the glassware... That must have been from when he was still working at, for the chemical plant. This, that stuff must be ancient. Well, in that case, there's something I need to get out of my chest. You broke it. I haven't been completely honest with you. 
Remember how I said I wanted privacy? Well, that wasn't completely true. I used to sell a little- Oh, we are selling drugs. Sick, we got a chance, boys. Yeah? Weed. Just on the side. I don't know if you can sell that much weed, bro. You know, just to make a little cash. My folks found out they kind of flipped. That's why they kicked me out. I was afraid if you saw my plants, you'd well... Somehow, I'm really not really surprised. But you don't care? I have lived in a dorm before. It's not exactly a foreign concept to me. Eli let outside. <sighs> That's a relief. You never know when someone might have a stick up their rear about that stuff, you know? But hey, you never told me you went to college. What did you study? Oh, we are selling drugs. That's why I'm a chemistry person. Perfect. I'm not actually done yet. But I was studying chemistry. Ew, that's perfect. You can use your late major league brainiac skills to grow like super crops that will sell for twice as much. I didn't have the heart to tell Eli. I didn't think my skills would translate to farming that easily. So, your gramps was a chemist too. Is that why you went to study it? I guess I never thought about it like that. Maybe. He used to tell me all about the stuff he would manufacture at the old plant. Drugs. We're selling drugs. His granddad used to sell drugs. Geez, that place shut down like a few decades ago. Your Gramps really was, well, Gramps. So, how should we start? Guess I need to head into town and buy some seeds. Then I'll scope the, out the property and start clearing out a patch of dirt for us to grow on. I nodded my head and left Eli to his work before starting down the dirt path to town. As I arrived into town, this the streets were desolate. Yes, it's too early for anyone else to be awake. I headed towards the general store and the door opened with a satisfying ring from a small bell attached to the bot to the top. The general store had everything a person in a small town can need. From food and drink to cleaning products and toiletries, candies, pastries, there's a little something for everyone. I spotted the small rack that held a variety of garden seeds. I wonder what my granddad even grew. More importantly, I wonder who he sold to. Can I help you find anything? Wait, the fluffy panda, is that you? My, it feels just like yesterday that you and little Eli would come in with here with quarters you stole from the fountain to buy candies and sodas. But I'm rambling like an old hag now. Can I help you find something? Did my grandfather buy seeds from you? Oh yes, and I would always buy summer watermelons. They were always our most popular product this time of year. There should be someone on the shelf in the back. Thank you. I turned to find the rack of seeds and began to browse through the various selection. I turned to the sound of the door opening. A woman walked in and strolled past me without a passing glance, turning down the aisle. Oh, Lyra, back again so soon? Lyra? I turned to look at her. I almost didn't recognize her. She turned to face me and I looked back at the packets of seeds, pretending to read the label. I don't think she recognized me. Then I remembered. I remembered the last time I saw her. And the wave of guilt rolled over me. I wonder if she... I pulled as many watermelon seeds off the rack as were available and headed for the counter. Lyra was already checking out her items. Out her items. She turned to face me. Do I... Wait. Fluffy Panda, is that you? I... Lyra... It's been 10 years. I don't think I've seen you since I was a kid. Must be. So what are you doing back in Somerset? You know, just getting away from it all for a few weeks. My job can be stressful. It's nice to have a little time to oneself. I nodded my head. And you? I heard about your grand granddad. He was a good man. I assume you're here to settle his affairs. Yeah. All by yourself? Too many memories for the folks. 
He glared at the cumbersome pile of seeds in my arms. And now? Ha! I never took you for a farmer. I'm actually a chemistry student. But I'm trying out a new hobby. Look cleared her throat and Lyra turned and paid with a few bills. Lyra picked up her, up her items and slipped them into her purse. It was nice to see you again. She hurried for the door almost a little too quickly. She must work at that bar. And with that sound, she was gone. The clerk cleared her throat again. Ahem. Oh, sorry. The old lady calculated the price by hand with a small pencil and notebook. Jesus. I paid her with a few of the ragged bills Eli had given me and picked up the bag of seeds. Have a nice day. I made my way back to the farm and find found oh ah I made my way back to the farm to find Eli hard at work, bow in hand as he continued to dig at the earth. Hey man, you got those seeds? I nodded my head. Cool. I dug around the garage and found your granddad's old tools. Handed me a shovel. Let's get working. We're gonna make. $100,000 with watermelons. Eli and I spent the rest of the day working, and from the fruits of our labor, we managed to cobble together a small patch of planted watermelon seeds. I'm actually a watermelon expert myself. I grew watermelons for like eight years. I think the most I made, well, not the most I made, but the most I made for the, uh, we sold was like $4,000 worth. And I was working like three fields with like, maybe like, I don't know, a lot of acres, bro. It was a lot of work. But only like four thousand, five thousand dollars. Granted, we sold them cheap, but man, I'm pooped. Who would have thought that farming would be so manual? <laughs> he does look exhausted. It's hard. I'll see you in the morning. We have another big day ahead of us. But planting them's not hard. It's weeding them that's the hard part. Jesus Christ, dude. Eli and I parted ways to our separate rooms, and picking them looks hard too. They're heavy. I fell face first into bed. What a day. My legs ached and my hands were covered in newly earned blisters. Ira, I wonder. I couldn't keep my eyes open. That's not the rooster. This place. I remember. Hey, the fluffy panda, can I play with you guys? No, get away. We don't play with stupid girls. Come on, let's get out of here. But she never did leave us alone. Now that I think of it, I don't think she had any friends back in those days. Oh yes, it's the young friend <laughs> romance. Hey, the fluffy panda, I got you this. I remember she was blushing when she handed them to me. One was strawberry, the other was vanilla. Ha ha ha, your girlfriend brought you ice cream. Shut up, she's not my girlfriend. I remember I blushed too. I can totally see it in your face, you like her. Shut up, I do not. I remember picking up the sand. I bet you want to kiss her and everything. I remember her running away crying. Oh, you hit her with the sand, you giant dick? Wow, dude. I mean, he is a kid, but damn, dude. That shit hurts, dog. The fluffy panda, did you throw sand at Lyra's face today at the beach? No, who told you that? Her mother called and said she came home crying. Whatever, she's just a dumb girl. It's not my fault. She's a big crybaby. The fluffy panda, you are going to apologize to her this the instant you see her. Never did see her again after that. Not until today. I really never apologize. Jesus, dude. <laughs> Say into the face, though. Jesus Christ. Brutal. Time to get up. As I made my way outside, Eli was already hard at work. What should I do? Oh, God. There's options, dude. Oh. God, we already planted them and we're eating already? The next day? Sure, dude. I'll help Eli. Screw this. I'm not an expert. I headed over to eat where Eli was working. 
Hey man, nice morning, right? Even if it's a one-horse town, Somerset will always have its oceanside mornings to balance everything else out. I suppose. So what are you up to? I started working at another patch. I tilled and hoed it already, but while I was digging, I found this. He gestured me towards a small hole he had dug about he had dug about an inch deep. Getting down on all fours, he brushed away a thin layer of dirt and revealed the smooth face of a massive rock. Damn, that thing's massive. Yeah, it would take a forklift to get it out. Do you think we should start a new patch and ignore the spot? We dig it out, maybe you and me can pull it out together. You're the boss, boss. Jesus Christ, that's a lot of work. What are we doing here? We started by digging out the edges of the dirt around the rock until only the solid mass was left in the hole. Okay, let's try to lift it. We both clambered into the hole and got a solid grip on the rock. Okay, ready? Three, two... Wait, wait, wait. Do you lift with your knees or your back? Knees, dude. Knees. Knees. Okay, got it. One. <laughs> Go. We pulled as hard as we could. The, dog, the rock didn't budge. <laughs> the best thing to do in those situations is to make the weirdest noise and make the other person laugh so they can't lift it. I mean, it sucks in the long run because you still gotta lift it, but it's always funny. <laughs> Jeez, I think the only thing that moved was a disc in my back. There's gotta be a better way. I don't know, use the shovel and pry it up, dude. What? No, I'll probably break the shovel. Can't you use your, like, mag chemistry skills to build, a, like, a bomb or something to blow it up? I think a few of the locals might take issue with that. So you're saying you can build a bomb? I am the bomb. I thought it best not to answer that question. I've got a better idea. I climbed out of the hole and rushed back to the side of the garage where several 2x4s had been sitting. I grabbed two of them and headed, hurried back to Eli. So we're basically prying it out like I thought. Here's what we do, but not with the shovel. We use these planks as jacks. That way we can put all of our weight into lifting it. I think that's what we're doing. That's genius. That's like some physics stuff right there. We both took our 2x4s in hand and jacked them as deep as we could under the rocky yeah, album, right? Ready? I nodded my head. We pushed with all our weight to the, into the planks and the rock began to lift up. Just a little more. We leveraged the rock against the wall of the hole and with all our might managed to push it out. Eli wiped the sweat off his brow. Man, let's hope we don't have to do any more of these. We need to work, bro. We can't turn in for the day. I guess we'll... What the hell? Why are we weaving already? Start a new patch. I decided to start a new, completely new patch of watermelons. If we want to make any real money, we're going to need to scale up production. I just started by clearing out the larger shrubs and a few head-sized rocks. I tilled the open area and began to hoe out the holes for the seeds. After a few hours, I had the whole patch tilled and out and began to plant the seeds. With a small tilt from the watering can, I left the seeds to germinate. Weed the patch, bro. We got work to do. I spent the I guess. I spent the next hour pulling out the various weeds that seemed to spring endlessly in every direction. Eli and I had, had just weeded this area yesterday, but in no time at all, a new layer of dandelions, white clovers, and chickweeds had began to pollute the small watermelon patch. This is true, but it doesn't happen in a day. But once it does start, it's non-stop, forever. Turn in for the day. That's enough work for one day. I wonder what watermelons were your Clemson Sweets, Charleston Grays, Carolina Cross. That's what we call them anyways, I don't know what the actual names are. After another day of back-breaking work, Eli and I had turned in for the day. It's gonna be another hard day of work tomorrow. Best turn in early. Icebox watermelon. What kind of watermelons are we talking here? <laughs> Morning. Dude! Dude, you gotta wake up! Oh no, they're raiding our watermelon patch. 
badgers, probably. Raccoons. Bye, shot open. Damn groundhogs. Eli, get out here now, man. I rushed outside to find Eli staring over our tirelessly chilled earthworks. All our work down the dude, down the tube. Then I saw it. A carefully cultivated earthworks had been completely dug up. All the seeds were gone, and what small germlings we had were nowhere to be seen. Who would do that? Something must have gotten into the patch and ate all the seeds. They don't eat- th I've never seen anything eat the seeds. Something. I don't know, rats or something. All that worked for nothing. It was like the only two days of honest labor I ever did, and all for nothing. I have to start over. Start over? Come on, man. I think it's time we call it. We were never gonna sell a hundred grand in watermelons before the end of the summer. <laughs> no shit. I'm glad we got. It. I'm glad we figured that out. We can't just do nothing. Eli let out a sigh. Eh, I guess you're right. Picked up his tools and got back to work. Guess I'll have to go back into town and get more seeds. What kind of animal just eats the seeds? Digs up the seeds and eats them. I've never seen that. I made my way back into Somerset and towards the general store. I pushed the front door open. Oh, Lila stole her damn seeds, bro. Back so soon. Fain to half smile. Just need a few more things. I began to look through the racks of seeds. Maybe a different type? Who am I kidding? Eli's right. There's no way I can grant, grow a hundred grand of crops in three months. I'm screwed. I let outside and put the seeds back. As I turned to leave, I knocked over a small bottle of cleaning solution. I picked it up. Now polish remover. Nothing more than dil diluted acetone. I bet the guy who thought of that is rolling in it. Out of sheer aimlessness and desperation, I began to browse the aisles of the store in search of some answer. We're making meth. <laughs> I came across a bag of tea leaves on one of the shelves. Mormon tea. I realized I said that out loud. Something wrong? Oh, nothing. I think I've heard of this stuff. Yes, very popular with some of the locals. They grow at a, lo at a local farm a few miles up the road. Some of the locals don't like to drink coffee, so they drink this stuff instead. I read about it in a textbook. It's from a plant, a shrub. Epinephrine. <laughs> I don't know. Ephedra. Pistachia. I think it's called... has ephedra in it. Ephed... Ephed what? It's a natural stimulant. They used to put it in all sorts of stuff. Workout powders, energy drinks. Until it was used. Then I got an idea. A very, very bad idea. $100,000 in three months. I returned to the small shelf with all the cleaning supplies. It took us a while, but we got there. I picked up four bottles of the acetone solution and brought them over to the counter. Panda. I jumped to the sound of her voice like I thought someone had already caught on to what I was thinking. Oh, Lyra. Hey. You okay? Yeah, yeah, just a busy day ahead of me. Hey, so, sorry about running off on you the other day. I was just a little surprised to see you, that's all. Yeah, me too. So... Listen, I was thinking maybe we should hang out sometime, catch up on the lost years. Uh, you got a phone, right? Oh man, I'm not even just, she's making the moves. Before I could respond, Lyra had retrieved her own cell phone from her purse and handed it to me to enter my number. I entered it with a few clicks before handing it back to her. The clerk cleared her throat. Ahem. Oh right, sorry. I placed the bottles on the counter and pulled out my wallet, placing some more of the ragged bills on the counter. You must be lonely on that farm all by yourself. 
Actually, you remember Eli? How could I forget? We're actually sort of roommates now. You two are near the same roof? You're liable to burn the place down. I began to eye the bottles about acetone I was buying. Acetone? Acetone? I don't know. Have you given up on farming so quickly? The half-truth spilled it from my mouth before I even, I re I even realized I was saying it. We used to clean it, all the machinery on the farm. Tractors, engines, motors, that kind of stuff. I guess you really are a chemist, or maybe just a really good janitor. I picked up the bag that held my items. I, I better get going before Eli burns down the property. I turned to leave. Hey, the fluffy panda. I turned back. See you now. I'm trying to get a revenge for the time I sanded her ass. We're <laughs> screwed. I rushed back to the farm. Hey man, you get the more seeds? No. No? Don't, don't tell me you're out of money. You're right, Eli. You can't grow a hundred grand worth of crops. Well, I'm not so sure about that. I just said that because I was all flustered, you know. But, for sure we won't get anywhere without seeds. Eli, you said you sold weed on the side, right? Oh man, we're breaking bad. <laughs> Well, sure, four or five times, but I never made it a habit. Sure, dude, four or five times, sure. Who did you sell it to? Well, why? Someone asking about me? Humor me. Just like a guy I knew. He was a friend of a friend from high school. What was your biggest score? Listen, man, there's no way we can grow pot out here without someone noticing. Just answer the question. Like a few grand once, but it took me a month to grow that amount for my, for my little shrubs. Did he buy more than just weed? Well, why? Come on, man, work with me. He was a distributor. He sold everything under the sun and then some. How, how much do you think we could get for something a little... Bro, I think what's gonna happen... Well, I'm not gonna spoil it. I think this is going badly, though, with Lyra. Harder? Harder? Like, how much harder? I could be wrong, too. Meth I told you we were selling meth! I knew it! Methamphetamine. I knew we were selling meth, bros. What? Methamphetamine? Liar's gonna get hooked on meth. We're screwed, bro. <laughs> this was gonna happen. Meth? Like crystal? Are you crazy? You said it yourself. There's no way we can grow that much from... That much scratch. So the way I see it, we need to synthesize it. Look, I understand what I'm asking you to do is crazy and illegal. I can't do this alone. You walk. I'll understand, but I'll have to do it myself. This is my last resort. If you walk, I'm probably gonna have to shoot you so you don't tell anybody, to be honest. I slowly extended my hand. I hesitated for a moment. He reached out and shook it. Partners to the end. We sell meth. That's crazy. And so as quickly as we had picked up farming, we abandoned the premise. This escalated quickly. Are you really going to do this? Yes, we are. Man, our rooster died to the meth. He's not even con anymore, bro. Day five, we sold meth to the rooster. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> What did the rooster go, dude? After sending Eli out with the sh long shopping list, I started organizing all the things we already had. Most of Granddad's glassware was still intact, and I had most of it cleaned and set up in the garage. I heard the sound of a truck pulling up to the driveway. A minute later, Eli appeared through the side door, two bags in each hand. Okay, I managed to get everything you asked for. Did it just the way you told me to. Drove all over the county to spread the purchases out. I think I went to like a dozen different hardware stores. Got it all. Those plastic suits, respirators, tubing, plastic tarps, all those chemicals you asked for. I don't think I know about what half these things are, even are. 
I had the bottle of acetone, methanol, and drain cleaner. No problems? Well, when I bought the plastic suits and respirators, the guy on the counter asked me what they were for. What'd you say? I told him I work for a company that scrapes roadkill off the side of the road. The <laughs> iDubs fucking road cleaning project? <laughs> Good lie. Well, other than that, it all went down chill. What about the matches? Yeah, I got the weird ones you asked for. The big boxes of individually divided ones. What are they for? Matches? Nothing. We want the striking plates that come in each matchbook. They're the easiest source of red phosphorus and the individual packs have the highest yield. What about flares? I couldn't find any like you said. That's fine, it just means we'll have to grind down more strikers. And the chemicals, you found everything? He nodded his head. Two things, the drain, cl drain cleaner and muriatic acid. I need to check them. Eli handed me the two jugs that contain each respectively. Alright, these look good. We'll have to concentrate e each to a level that we can use. Acid? Like the stuff that melts through bones and stuff? Not quite. Either way, it should be easy to distill concentrated sulfuric acid with Grandad's glassware. Dude, how do you even know this stuff? Is there like a Math 101 class or something? Google. It's just chemistry. So, what have you been up to? Cleaned up the glassware. Grandad must have loved these toys. I gesture to the glassware. Beakers, volumetric flask, retort flask, and condensers. He even has a modular glass still buried away in these boxes. We can do titrations, redox reactions, you name it. The old man even had a hand crank for vacuum filter. I don't know what half of those words even mean. I nodded my head. Let's get everything set up. Bro, we, we just went broke bad hard, dude. So, did you call your guy? Yeah, he agreed to meet with the stuff you asked for, but look. The guy he works for is a complete psycho, so the less we deal with these guys, the better. When's the meet? Eli let outside. Uh, night, midnight, here. Here? Not like we're gonna be interrupted, and as far as they know, this is just some dead farmer's rotting property. Sorry, sorry, I didn't mean it like this. It's just we were interrupted by a sound of a phone ringing. Oh, Slyla, I took my phone out of my pocket and opened it. Hey, you there? What's up? Meet at the bar tonight? Who is it? It's. Well, you remember Lyra, right? Lyra? I haven't seen her in years. Is she back in town? She's either gonna get hooked or she's an undercover agent. That would suck. Oh, bro. The, I think. Allegedly. I bumped into her in town and she wants to catch up. I'll tell her another time. Wait, no. If you say no, it'll look suspicious. The deal's not till later tonight. That's plenty of time for you guys to meet and greet and then come back. But what if we, you know, do the stuff? Are you sure? Dude, you're a chemistry student that lives on a farm in the middle of summer break. Saying no to meeting a girl at a club is like, or bar, is like documenting that you're housing some shady dealings, shadow dealings. Yes, he has a point. I look down to my phone. Do I have to click? Sure. Sure, what time? 8 o'clock? Sounds good. It's pretty quiet. Quiet there. On the weekend. See you there then. Can I give you advice? Taking advice from Eli looks felt like looking down the barrel of a loaded gun, says a guy who decided to make meth. Sure. Okay. 
Take a shower and change into something that doesn't smell like a meth lab. I took Eli's advice to heart before changing into some more form formal clothes. Half an hour to sp spare, I started to walk towards Somerset. Bro, if she's an FBI agent, this visual novel is like my worst nightmare, for real. <laughs> like, when I arrived back in town, the streets had almost completely emptied with the setting sun. On the weekend Somerset's nightlife would... On the weekend Somerset's nightlife would stay up early into the mornings entertaining tourists and vacationers. But on weekdays, it could be confused for any other rural town. I looked down at my phone. Guess she's already inside. Set up, bro. Pushed down the door to the swanky bar and was invited in by soft music. The room was extremely dim and my, as my eyes adjusted to the lighting, I spotted her sitting at the bar by herself. Found the place all by yourself. I was afraid I would have to draw you a map. Well, traffic was awful. Almost thought I wouldn't make it. She cracked a smile as I sat down. This place seems a little out of place in a town like Somerset. Some rich guy from the city bought the old lot that was here. Turned it into a place for the tourists from the city. Although, that just means this place is basically empty during the weekdays. So, are you still staying at the old summer cabin? cabin? No. Mary sold that place years ago. Some rich assholes bulldozed it and built a fancy beach house. That sucks. Lyra shrugged. Rich assholes will be rich assholes. No one forced us to sell. But yeah, it sucks. So where are you staying for the time being? The old inn by the beach. I remember that one. It's nice to know some of the old places are still around. Summer sets changed since we were kids. Or maybe it just seems that way now that the rose tinted shades are off. I took a sip from her drink. You thirsty? Oh, I don't drink. Suit yourself. I took another sip from her glass, leaving behind a small purple imprint of lipstick. Oh, that's nice to touch. Oh. I felt her lip with one finger and put then pulled out her purse, revealing a thin tube of purple gloss from it, which she carefully reapplied to her lips. That's a pretty shade. Expensive, too. It's really a deterrent more than anything. Deterrent? He shrugged. I didn't know if you were going to show up, and there are plenty of the handsome people that frequent this place. But I made sure to wear this shade as a reminder and a deterrent. Is it poisonous? She laughed at this. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. No, not quite. They stopped making this specific shade a few years ago, and it was always my favorite. You can buy it online for an arm and a leg, so, but I can never really rationalize spending so much on something so simple. So, how's it a deterrent? Well, if I was to say, Kiss someone tonight. What? I would want it to be worse to someone worth my time. Otherwise, I would have soiled such a fine tube for nothing. She cracked a smile and took another sip from her drink. Dang, she's thirsty as hell. <laughs> Literally. So, how many years has it been? Close to ten now, I think. All those summers seem so far away now, like a dream that was never real. So, what have you been doing for all these years? Not much. Coasted through high school, went to university to study chemistry. Can't say I've spent much time doing anything exciting. You? Never actually said what you do for your job. My job? You pause for a moment. It requires me to work with people. I guess you can say I'm not exactly a people person. So, why do you stick with it? She seemed to compose herself for a moment. It's just, sometimes I feel like I'm a broken clock. In a way, we all are. 
We all have that one thing that makes us whole. That one thing that we can do better than anyone else. And when we get to do that one singular thing, that's when we get to tick right twice a day. So you don't like people? People can be cruel. At some point, you get tired of being hurt. There was a moment of silence as she broke eye contact with me. I have a way with people. A way of seeing the worst in them. It's a gift and a flaw. I can never see something as wholly good without it nagging in the back of my mind. Nagging? Like a parasite that gnaws away, looking for the one simple human truth that I've always found to be true. Which is? That there can't be good without bad. She knows too much. Get out of there, dude. That all sounds intense. I guess it's a lonely out. I guess it's a lonely outlook on the world, but it's not all bad though. When you expect the worst in people, you'll never be disappointed in them. You then seem to recall at our own words. I I didn't mean to insinuate anything about it's fine. They they weren't exactly throwing me going away parties when I left for university. And when I got there, I made friends with the glassware and the textbooks. Lyra laughed at this. <laughs> when I was a kid, I used to think you and Eli were the clo coolest two people on the planet. I guess it's just hard to imagine you up to your nose in textbooks. Got a weight of guilt running through my gut. Seems kind of fitting we ended up where we did it then, I guess. What do you mean? It's just... never mind. Let's... You let out another small chuckle. <laughs> Talk about something else. So, the farm. What's your plan? Huh. I was gonna sell it to a local. At least that was the plan. What happened? I ran into a few bumps in the road. But I have some plans in the work. If you and Eagle had cooked up those plans, I can only imagine how this is going to end. I laughed at this, but even still, I remembered how things had ended all those years ago. I felt a wave of guilt return to me. I should really say something. All those years ago, Lyra. Hmm? And as if someone knew I was in trouble. Oh, that's mine. I opened it. It was Eli. Dude, the dealer. You pushed the deal up. 20 minutes. Get your pants on. Everything okay? Yeah, just something at the farm. Lyra, I have to go. I figured as much. She then finished off her drink in one final swig. I have a few minutes. I can walk you back to your hotel room if you want. She smiled at this as she stood. Huh. I'll manage on my own. I'm a big girl after all. She then placed her hand on my shoulder and in one swift movement planted a small kiss on my cheek, leaving behind a faint purple imprint. But thanks for offering. She pulled her purse over her shoulder and with a small hand movement waved goodbye as she left me at the barn. See you around. I wiped the small stain away and looked down at my finger that was now smudged purple. I exited the bar quickly and quickly headed back, hurried back to, towards the farm. You made it. You let out a long sigh. <sighs> so, what are you going to say? What? You're the dealer. You got a plan? Just a business transaction, right? You've done this before. Yeah, but nothing, never anything this big. Man, I thought you had a plan. I had a plan? You're the ex-drug dealer. By the way, did you really text me the details of a drug deal me being pushed up? Me? It took you all of one day to decide you wanted to cook crystal meth. And you don't have a plan for talking to this guy? Aw, oh, man. Please tell me you at least have the money to pay this guy. I got it all, don't worry. 
Why am I paying him? He should be paying me. Just then, a bright red muscle car pulled up through the open wood gate and wooden gate and stopped just in front of us. A man in a hoodie appeared from the driver's seat. Hey man, how's it going? You've been like chilling and stuff. When we cut the formals and get to the deal. Sure thing, man. The man then began sizing me up from head to toe. Who is this punk Eli? Hey man, he's chill. You don't got to worry. As soon as the scout had disappeared, it disappeared. Alright man, you boys looking to party? He then popped his trunk to fill a carefully organized collection of illegal substances. You brought the pseudo, right? Yeah, I brought it, man. Is that really all you guys want? All I'm paying for it. Oh damn, Eli. This dude got a stick so far up his ass, it's coming out his nose. Listen, friend, I got it all. Black crack, blow acid weed, every prescription you could need. Oh, that rhymes, read and read. Huh, nice. Applied by the finest merch the country ha county has to offer. How much pseudo do you have? A few dozen boxes. Tell you what, I'll cut your deal for the pseudo. You throw in a sample of, and throw in a sample of your choice. You strike me as a refined guy. How about oxys? No, you're not giving me freaking pump, dude. Just a pseudo. I'm getting other people up. Man, is it just me, Eli, or does this little bitch seem to want to exchange rush to the exchange part of the deal a little too, too quick? Come on, man, he's chill. The Fluffy Panda's just gotta, like, got like a mathematical mind, you dig? He's all about the solution, you know? Why, suit yourself, you prooby asshole. Here's the deal. Four grand for a four dozen boxes. You've got more than a dozen boxes in there. I got other clients, dog. Supply and demand. Mind if I check the pills? Say, you saying I'm trying to pull a fast one? Hey, hey, come on, it's chill, dude. It's all there. Or show me the scratch, dog. Three grand for a dozen. Holy shit. No wonder he doesn't want any product. This dude must be stone cold stoned out of his brain. I'm serious. I like you, Eli, but this is bullshit. He then kicked the dirt in front of me and closed his trunk, returning to the driver's side door. Wait, come on, man. You walk away. Oh, you walk away now. You're going to lose the biggest tour of your career. And how's that, man? You talk about supply and demand, but I couldn't help but notice you have no methamphetamine in the back of this dick compensator you call a car. You got more pseudo pseudofedrin in there than anything else. So I'm guessing the lab you bought and sold went to... The lab you bought and sold to went up in smoke. They get busted? The dealer scoffed. Huh. Two jib heads I bought. I bought from blew themselves up on the interstate driving an R around an RV. They were cooking shake and bacon. Two grand. For all the pseudos. The dealer opened his mouth to laugh. Would you come back next week with 30 grand and I'll have a proud a pound of chemically pure product. No crap, no filler, no cuts, all profit. You got balls. 25. 30. Dealer spit a large mass into the dirt and shook his head. <laughs> Circus must be in town, cause all I see is a bunch of clowns. He then turned and looked back at me with a flare of malice. You fuck with me on this. Those two jib heads aren't, ain't the only ones the cops are going to find burning on the side of the interstate. So, we have a deal? The man popped the trunk on his car. Yeah, we got a deal. He quickly picked up the box of pseudo, pseudo veteran he and he had and stuffed them into a large garbage bag before thrusting them into Eli's hands. I handed him the envelope with the rest of my cash. You got three days. 
do not fuck me. With the slam of his door, he drove off into the night. How did you know how much to ask for a pound of, pound of math? I shrugged. I did. Why, do you think I went too low? Fuck, dude. I said we shouldn't be making deals with these guys. Now you want to sell a pound of crystal to them? As opposed to what? Selling it on the side of the street from a cardboard stand like it's lemonade? So unless you have some other contact we can sell to, this is our best option. I grabbed the bag of pills. Oof. You want me to save game? Did I click something? It just took me straight here. Oh yeah, I clicked on accident, my bad. I grabbed the bag of pills. I was like, is that a message? Is that a sign from video game God? Come on, let's get some sleep. Tomorrow we start for real. Eli and I spent a silent night in our separate rooms. Were you actually going to do this? I mean, it's too late to back out now, homie. We're officially out of money, and we've already come this far. Eli is afraid of those guys. I don't think we have a choice but to cook. The rooster's back. He recovered. Nice. Or it's a new rooster. Who knows? Today's the day. I made my way to the garage. Eli was already there. Nice. Cooking it right out in the open. Sick. Not in the garage or anything. Hey, man. So we're actually going to do this? Look at that fan back there. We're ready. Hey, look at the chemistry table. I nodded my head. No turning back. Where do we start? First things first, PPE. This stuff is toxic. I open the windows and turn on the fan to start circulating air out of the room. I always heard that meth labs smell like cat pee. We're not very far from town. You sure you won't draw suspicion? You won't draw suspicion? That smell is caused by the ammonium and sulfur-based compounds released from the manufacturing process. Luckily for us, that's the exact same thing that gives fertilizer its earthy smell. It's all the farming that's done in this area. If anyone does catch a whiff, they'll probably just dis dismiss it as manure. And then we started. Eli and I changed into the large full body plastic suits he had bought from the hardware store. We started by handing Eli a nail file, file and a beaker. We are filing down the striker strips for red phosphorus. Eli hesitantly took the metal instrument. Even with all the PPE on, I could tell he was still he was nervous. If anything, all the gear we were wearing only compounded his already fractured nerves. You, you sure? What if I do something wrong? Simple. Just to try to get as much of the dust into the beaker as you can. We'll measure out the amount we need for the reaction later. All right. I took a piece of paper and a pencil in hand and began to draw out the reaction mechanism. After an hour, Eli had collected a half of the beakers full of red phosphorus, and I had completed my calculations. Alright, let's start crushing the pseudos. I handed him a mortal and a pestle, and we began to break open the pallets of thin red pills, popping the pills into the small ceramic bowls before crushing them into, up into a fine pink dust. Alright. I turned on the hot plate. Now we start the fun part. Fun? Can you maybe break down what we're all we're going to do? The chemistry is called a reduction. The transfer of electrons from one molecule to another. The reaction is called a Nagai re reduction. Nagai? He was a Japanese chemist from the 19th century who first synthesized methamphetamine. Using a reduction reaction called ephedrine iodine and red phosphorus. You know, you're saying a whole lot of words, but I don't think you're actually speaking English. Well, if it makes you feel any better, we're going to have a few warm-up steps, so maybe you'll find your chops along the way. There are a few precursor compounds we're going to need to manufacture ourselves. Precursor? We're going to make our own hydrogen iodide and use that to perform the reduction with red phosphorus. That should increase our overall yield significantly. Okay, how do we do that? Half the chemicals I had you buy, the drain cleaner, bleach, urea, gelatin packets, all of that is going to be used to make hydrazine. 
Wait, wait, I've heard of that stuff. That's like rocket fuel or something, right? Yes, to some extent, but what we're making is a little different. We're going to make hydrazine sulfate, a powder version that's, act that's much safer. Okay, but what do we need it for? We're going to use it to make hydrogen iodide, which, in combination with water, will make hydrochloric acid or hydroiodic acid. Okay, and once we have that, then what? We begin cooking the real product. This all seems like a lot, dude. I don't know if I can handle this. Eli, I can't do this alone. Just follow my lead. We slipped our respirators over our faces. First the hydrazine. We gotta be careful, this stuff will boil if we add it too fast. More ice. Let it cool. Keep stirring. Add it slowly. Okay, hydrazine is done. Let's move on to the iodine. Watch it. Keep the fan on full. Okay, now we mix it with the deionized water. Our very first acid. Now we start the real cook. I pull my notes out. All I have to do is follow the instructions. Oh, fudge, dude. What do I do first? Help me. Oh, we put the ephedrine on low heat, I guess, bro. Oh, my bad. Uh, how do I get out of this? <sighs> this looks confusing. Place ephedrine and blow the flask. What next? Blah. I guess we add hydrogen iodide with low heat, right? Yeah, sure. I think that worked. What next? Save, probably. All right. Uh, I don't. I don't know. Uh, what is here? Oh my bad. I add red phosphorus. Where do we see red phosphorus at? I don't see it. Bro, I am so confused. Send help. Why add the red phosphorus? I don't know what heat. I guess I'll use high heat. Sure. What's that noise? Good thing I saved. That didn't work. Maybe try again. I right, place a bedroom. I think that worked. Red phosphorus with low heat. So far, so good. Uh, God, I keep right clicking. My bad. Jesus. Add hydrochloric acid. Ah, damn it. Okay, dude. Add solvent water. That didn't work. Okay, that's all of it. That looks good. Almost done. I can't even follow these notes. Extract the aqueous layer. Something's not right here. Okay, extract the organic layer. The final product. Sick. By the time we were done, I had completely lost track of time. It had taken all day to prepare the precursors and finish the cook. But as the final product solidified into its crystal form, I breathed a sigh of relief. I took my respirator off and Eli stood catatonic, not sure if he should follow my footsteps. It's fine, all the fumes are long gone by now. We stripped off our PPE and stored them away before turning to the final or turning to our final product. So how much do we have? I checked the consistency of the product. It had hardened and crystallized into its pure solid form. I guess we found find out. I took a rubber mallet in hand and began to smash the crystalline product into manageable chunks. Hand me one of those bags. Eli passed me a clear plastic sandwich bag. I placed the bag on our new electronic scale and zeroed the weight before pulling it off and loading it up with our newly synthesized product. I placed it back on the scale and Eli and I watched with bated breath as the weight increased. 510 
0.291 grams. Is that a lot? That's... I paused as I did the math in my head. About 18 ounces. And is that a lot? It's over a pound. That's about 1.1 pounds, so yes, I'd say we came out ahead this time. Based on the amount of pseudo we've used, that's about 92% yield by the weight from our precursor of veteran. And is that good? Yes, that's very good, dude, I guess. I turned and faced him. Yes. That's... I last will. Oh, oh, oh. That's very good. You seem to breathe a sigh of relief. And what about purity? Do you think they'll have it, any problems with it? I took a long look at one of the crystals. It wasn't discolored or cloudy. Well, if we had some TLC plates and a pure sample of meth, I could give you a ballpark level. Or UV spectroscopy. That would work, also work, but... Get to the point, man. Is my guy gonna have any problems? Not in my head. No. You mean you shook her head? We did good, Eli. Jeez, that's a relief. <laughs> man, I was afraid of what my guy would do if we showed up empty-handed. You did good today, Eli. Ha, huh, maybe I'll put this on my resume. I wouldn't. Coughed. Huh. I had technical experience in the production of organic compounds. If you add that on your CV, I'm sure you could get a real job. See, seeing Eli crack a smile set my mind at ease. This whole thing was intense. Well, the next time we'll do even better. Plus, it should take less time since we synthesized all the precursors already. Next time, we haven't even sold one batch. I just mean, you did good, Eli. You're a g damn fine partner. Thanks. I'm exhausted, man. Yeah, let's get some sleep. Keep me in the loop about your guy and tell me what we have, and tell him we have the stuff ready. Sure thing. I think I'll go to the bar for a nightcap. After all this, I need a drink. No, don't do it. Can I give you some advice? Uh, sure, man. Take a shower and change into something that doesn't smell like a meth lab. Huh. No, you're letting your partner go out. He's going to tell people stuff while he's drunk. We're screwed. Eli and I went our separate ways for the night. <laughs> Morning again. I wonder if Eli made it back okay. Got out of bed and headed down the hallway. He got arrested. We're screwed. Eli? I knocked on the door of his room and heard no response. I pushed the door open a crack. The room smelled heavy of weed and several empty bottles of beer sat on his table, bedside table. He was passed out in bed. Guess he was out late celebrating. I knocked on the edge of the door frame and he snorted as he slumped awake for a moment. Uh, what? Making sure you're still breathing. Leave me what? Ooh, my head. Close the door. Ugh, we're screwed. I guess you've earned a day off. Then I heard it. Turn to my charging phone. Hey. What's up? You busy? I was thinking. Beach day? Sounds like fun. Got a new swimsuit. Been waiting to break it in. Sure, what time? One o'clock? Oh, shit. Eli's still obviously hungover, stumbled into the room. Dude, we got a problem. He held up his phone and I read the messages in question. Last night, I apparently, I called my guy. He thinks we're going to meet in an hour for the deal. What? Why would you do that? Dude, I was plastered out of my mind. I kind of overdid it, but you know, it was a celebration. Listen, obviously this isn't ideal. Sober up. We'll meet with them and do the deal. Okay, okay. I hurried into the garage and found the bag of crystal we had cooked just the other day. Wait a second, is Lyra gonna come here, dude? I picked it up and already could tell something was wrong. It wasn't where I had left it the other day. I placed it on the scale. 1.05 pounds. Eli, get in here. Wait, what, what? I'm missing an ounce. I'm, uh, missing? What happened last night? You didn't smoke. 
What? No! What happened? I could tell that question was racking every fiber of his brain for an answer. Oh god, I think I might have sold it to someone last night. What? You sold it? It's all so fuzzy, but I think I met a guy last night. Oh fuck, dude, we're screwed. He had some friends who were looking to party, and I was so drunk. Open your wallet. What? Just do it. Eli reached into his back pocket and pulled out the small leather sleeve. Inside we found a few hundred dollars in fresh clean bills. Did you have this cash before? No, no, I had maybe 40 bucks after the shopping spree for the lab. So who did you sell it to? I don't know, man. I was so fucked up. Well, think. I, I think it was a college kid or something. You're joking? What are we going to do? What do you mean? I mean, can this guy ID you? Well, I mean, why would he need to do that? So if this guy gets caught with drugs, what's the first thing the cops are going to ask him? Fuck. 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 Oh God, I think I'm going to puke. You idiot. Not my lab, do not. Eli rushed out of the room and outside. Bruh, Eli, dude. I grabbed the private product and hurried out after him, just in time to watch him hurl over the side of the porch. I am so screwed. Eli, we shouldn't be making any assumptions, but all we know that this guy was a tourist and he could already be gone. Oh fuck, I gotta skip town, man. Eli, you gotta get a grip. You'll lay low for a bit, but for now, in the short term, we need to get ready for the deal. Where's it going down? Is that really all you can think about right now? I'm just saying, if you need to, you do need to skip town, you're going to need cash. Okay, okay, you're right. Eli pulled his phone out of his pocket. He's gonna be here in 20 minutes. Oh, dude. Eli and I scrambled to get everything together and rushed outside before the dealer showed up. As the dealer's red muscle car pulled up to the farm, Eli looked like he was going to throw up again. Oh, dude. So, you two morons sure no one lives here? Yeah, man, it's cool. Old guy who lived here kicked a few months ago. No one's been here since. You know ID life from head to toe. You look like shit. But whatever, just show me the product. First, I want to see the money. Dealer rolled his eyes and pulled a Ziploc bag that held several rolls of cash from the back of his car. Product. Held out the bag and the dealer snatched him up in one swift motion. He opened the bag and took out one of the small jagged crystals before chasing it. He spat it out. Not bad for two morons. He took a small scale out of his back seat and weighed the bag. 1.05 pounds. And here I thought it was all error. He tossed me the bag of money and then pulled out his wallet and retrieved a few extra hundred dollars. For the extra half an ounce. Took the extra cash in hand. So, same time next week. We'll need more pseudo. Not my problem. What do you mean, not your problem? Listen, you guys got everything I had in hand. And? My pseudo guy got busted, okay? Who was he? Just a guy who worked, do worked at some pharmaceutical warehouse. He would scam a few boxes every now and then. Loose the paperwork here and there. You finally got caught, I guess. The man then got back in his car and I leaned in through his window to whisper. What happened to him? Has he been talking to the cops? Huh. The boss had that dude shipped in the back while he was showering in the local pen Dave. So don't you worry, your pretty little face. No one knows if talks about biz, our biz and gets away with it. With that, he drove off. As he made his way out of the gate, Eli threw up again. Oh man, you hear him? I'm not screwed, I'm dead, dude. All that guy was selling a few pills. What do you think they'll do what, when they learn I've been compromised? I'm not going to learn anything. How do you know? I gotta skip town. No. Eli, if you run now, it will, look, it will look suspicious. Not just to the cops, but to those guys too. 
You gotta play it cool for right now. I opened the bag of cash and began to count ha out half the rolls. Fifteen grand each. I handed him his share. This is a lot of money. I know. Now we need to talk about scale upscaling our production. Two or three pounds a deal, or else we're not going to be able to meet our deadline. Are you serious? Another deal? All things considered, this could have been worse. But how are we going to get that amount of pseudo? We barely managed one pound with all the boxes we had. I, I don't know yet. Fuck man, I gotta burn a joint before my heart explodes. Ah, oh, shoot dude. Eli took his cash and returned to his room. Then I remembered, Lilac Road, dude. I had completely forgotten about my phone. I rushed over to my bedside table and stashed a bag of cash into the drawer before grabbing my phone. Fuck, I'm late. Hey, are you there? What's going on? Sorry, had a problem. Can we meet later? I am in town right now. You should get here. Something happened. Aw, oh, dude overdosed. What? I grabbed my wallet and slipped it into my pocket with my phone before heading out. When I arrived in town, an aura of intensity had overtaken the whole city center. Then I noticed a small crowd. Something's not right. And then I saw it. A group of paramedics, carrying a black body bag into a mortuary amb ambulance. Damn, my breath killed a dude. What? Hey. She had found me amongst the crowd. Who, who is that? A local, apparently. Some college kid who was back in town for the break. What, what happened? There are a lot of rumors, but apparently they found drugs on him. With those words, I felt a burning anxiety take over me. They're saying he OD'd. I felt my heart being... Felt my heart begin to beat out of control. A burning tightness in my chest overtook me. I... Are you okay? I have to calm down. Yeah, it's just... Say something. I exhaled. And then the panic stopped. It's a tragedy. My heart beat slower. My chest began to clear. Did you know him? No, not really. He was a local, I think. Where did he get the drugs? If anyone's guess, but some... Oh. If anyone's guess, some tourist from the city probably sold it to him. Just another dumb kid who wanted to get high, and now... He let it outside. Uh, you want to get out of here? Yeah, I think I'll head back to my hotel. You want me to walk you back? I... Sure. Thank you, the fluffy panda. As we walked in the silence, I got the feeling that there was something Lyra didn't want to tell me. Are you okay? I'm... It's just a waste. A life thrown away for nothing, a few hours of euphoria. Is that really the sum of the life? Sometimes I think... Are we all... Are all... We... What in the world? Are we... I don't know how to say that. Are we all doing, as all we, we're doing, chaining memories, I don't know how to say it, any happy memories together, interlaced with the periods of intoxication, numbing out the pain and pretending to remember only the good things? Is that the sum of a life? I thought it best to give her some space. That guy. He must have been the one Eli sold to last night. If he's dead, no more loose ends. And if I tell Eli, it could take all that weight off his shoulder, or make him incredibly guilty, yeah. Or it could destroy him. What do I do? No. He deserves to know the truth. I took a step towards his shut door and raised a closed fist to knock. I hesitated and went for the doorknob. 
When I entered, all the lights were out and the curtains were shut. The room was heavy with the stench of weed and beer. Eli was sitting on his bed, looking away from the door. Eli, I need to tell you something. The guy you sold to yesterday, they found him. I was afraid this statement alone would cause him to freak out, but it didn't. He just stayed completely still, intent in the silence. He OD'd. I just want you to know, no one is looking for you. They can't prove anything. And it wasn't your fault. If that guy wanted drugs, he would have found someone else to sell to him. Silence was my only answer. Just keep your chin up. I closed the door. I turned in early after doing very little for the rest of the day. Morning. Oh, a rooster died to meth again. I rolled over and took my phone off the nightstand. Hey, you doing okay? You need to talk. I heard a knock on my door frame and looked up to find Eli. Hey man, what's up? My guy, the dealer, he texted me last night. He said he found a new suitor supplier if we wanted to make a deal. You're okay with that, even after what happened? Eli nodded his head. Once we make enough money, we can both put this whole thing behind us. I nodded my head. Hey, if you think that's the play, call your guy. Eli left the room and I turned back to my phone. Still no response from Lyra. Went outside to find Eli on the phone. After a few minutes, he hung up. He's on his way. Going okay? Eli nodded. I don't think I can blame myself. Whatever happens, happens, you know. It's like I said before, fate drove us here, right? And we made it this far. So I guess something out here has got our out there has got our back. Didn't know if I believed that. Waited in silence and half an hour later, the same red muscle car pulled up to the driveway. You boys look like shit. So what happened? Huh? Yesterday, you didn't want anything to do with us. Now you bent over backward just to find this new pseudo supplier. Ha! Huh, the crisps we cooked up go faster than anything we've had before. We turned a profit on that thing so quick it made the boss's head spin. So now we want more. I'll even up the price. The dealer then pulled a large bag of cash from his car. A hundred grand for three pounds. Three pounds? Do you know how much pseudo that would take? It's chill, dog. I've got the pills back here. He gestured for me to follow as he walked to the back of his car. He popped the trunk. What? It's empty. And a sharp pain ran down the back of my head. Hey, hey! I was forced into the trunk, dazed and reeling from the blow. I turned to fight back and saw the dealer pull a handgun from his waistband. He slammed the trunk door in my face and I was left in the muffled darkness. You wanna die, moron? Get in the car now! Okay, okay, I'm going! I could hear the fear in Eli's voice as the door to the car opened and then closed. Listen, man, what's this about? Shut up! I heard the muffled sound of something hit against metal and Eli was suddenly quiet. I could feel a small trail of blood oozing down the back of my head. I could feel myself beginning to fade. As I fell into a cold, dazed unconsciousness. Oof. That's not good. Wake up! I said, get the fuck up, dipshit! Well, what? Then everything came back to me like a sucker punch to the, back, to the head. Get the fuck up! The man then dragged me out of the trunk and into the blinding light of the midday sun. We were in the middle of a field somewhere, deep in what looked like the forest around Somerset. What the fuck is this about? He pulled the handgun from his waistband and pointed it at my face. I'm not here to answer your questions. He grabbed onto my short cuff and pulled me onto my feet before pushing me towards the door of the trailer. Where's Eli? Your boy's taking a nap in the back seat. I turned to look back at the car and the man hit me in the back of the head again with the edge of his handgun. Go, shithead. 
gestured me towards the RV. I opened the door into the trailer and was met with a mobile meth lab. It was remarkably like the setup Eli and I had created in the garage. Oh, this is the cook. Yeah, this is him. He cooked the stuff I bought you, brought you yesterday. So, you're the boss, right? Name Snakes. That crystal you cooked up. He then kissed his two forefingers and his thumb together like it had been fine cuisine. That shit sold faster than any product we've ever had. It was clean, cool, and straight sent those jib heads all the way to the moon and back. You, my friend, are an artist. What is this about? My man over here tells me about the little operation you've been pulling out of the garage. You, my friend, are Michelangelo. Your work should be hanging in the Louvre. You should be working out in a penthouse suite of a five-star hotel. Not scrapping together pseudo from two big, two big gangsters like this dude. He then again gestured to the dealer that who had brought me here. We're cooking in some dead guy's garage. I got connections with dudes who can get us all the pseudo we need. Why would I do that? Because I asked you nicely. What exactly do I get out of this deal exactly? Why? My friendship, of course. I wanted to see Eli. Snakes then let out of the long sky. Uh, I asked you nicely, man. We could have been friends. Snakes then pulled out a handgun out of his back waistband and cocked the chamber. Start cooking. I ain't gonna ask you, man. I turned and the dealer gave me the same look Snakes had. I looked over all the equipment in the mobile lab. Their glassware was filthy, but a significant amount of crushed pseudo and red phosphorus was already prepared along with everything else I would need. Think. Think. We're gonna blow the shit up, dude. Think. Go on, man. We all want to see the master in practice. These guys are just gonna waste me as soon as I've taught them how we made it. First of all, your glassware is filthy. How are you supposed to get a clean product when you have contaminants in every inch of this place? Yeah. Ha 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 ha! That's meth, dude. You think Jib heads give a crap of where it comes from? Now get working! One of these morons haven't blown themselves up yet. Ding! Then I got an idea. A very bad idea. I took the container labeled I and dumped it into the large speaker available. Luckily, they were the perfect brand for what I was doing. Small BB sized pellets of crystallized iodine. I then took the bottle of clear ammonia from the pile of various chemicals. This music's gone way too hard, dude. I'm lowering it again. Jesus. Let's hope these guys are as stupid as they look. I poured the ammonia into the container to its brim, waited for the reaction to take place. What are you doing? I've seen cooking before, and this don't look like cooking. Fuck, think now. It's a part of our process. By mixing ammonia with the iodine, we can purify the crystals. The result is a much purer final product. But the dealer and snake seem perplexed by this idea. Pure final product means more meth for less pseudo. More return on investment. Ha 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 ha. Now that's the shit I'm talking about. Not one of these morons would know to do that kind of level 10 shit. Keep going, and I want to know all the details. It has to be done now. As long as it's wet, there's no risk. I then poured the iodine beads through the large coffee filter to remove the excess ammonia. Then I poured the still wet beads into a second beaker to dry. It filled it almost to the top. That has to be a hundred, maybe 150 grams. This is fucking crazy. So what do you do with that? This. That. I gestured to the iodine crystals. Nothing. It has to dry first. I then started the real process. I just need to stall long enough for it to dry. Start by washing out the beakers with the bottled water and acetone. Nah, nah, man, skip that shit. Any moron can scrub glass. I want to see the real magic. I say we put a boy in his partner's kneecap. That auto acidifies him. Yo, shut the fuck up, man. This ain't your operation, bitch. I kept stalling for another 20 minutes, but soon could feel the aura of frustration growing to a climax. Alright, enough of this slow-ass bullshit. Show me the real shit or I'll waste your partner and then start target practicing with your toes. I normally have a partner, okay? If you guys hadn't knocked out Eli out, I wouldn't have to do all the manual labor myself. 
Have your guy help me out. Next turn to face the dealer. Do it. No oh, man, I ain't trying to get cancer from all those Kims and shit. You talking back to me, bitch? I don't touch that shit, man. I'll handle all the chemicals. I just need a, someone to prepare, clean, and crush the precursors. You heard him. You think Michelangelo made his own paints, huh? Do it. Think of it as a learning experience. Dealer then pushed his gun to his waistband. This is bullshit. Fine, what do I need to do? The iodine crystals. Start crushing them up. Handed him the pestle that had previously been used to crush the pseudo. Uh oh. He felt a surge of adrenaline as he took it in hand. He hovered over the crystals of iodine crystals. Container of iodine crystals. Now watched him raise the heavy blunt club. Everything seems so too slow as he reeled back to crush the compound. The pestle met with the iodine crystal and it bolted away from the counter like a cold snake. A massive cloud of purple iodine gas filled the trailer. I held my breath and slammed into snakes as I ran, and he tumbled into the floor of the trailer, completely caught off guard by the explosion. What the fuck? I heard the hiss of compressed gas escaping. Snakes had slammed into the valve of the propane tank they had been using for the burners. I could hear the pain-filled screams of the dealer as I rushed for the door. And as I burst through the door, I caught a glimpse of him in my peripherals. He was covered in blood. The sh jagged shards of glass had fragmented into his face and chest with deadly shrapnel. He was gripping his hand. That now only that was only now a purple stained mess of jumbled and bloody fingers. For the moment, his pain-filled screams were the only thing I heard as I blitzed out of the side of the trailer. I slammed the door closed behind me, pulling it as far as I could. As in an adrenaline-filled haze, I ripped the cheap metal handle off the frame, jamming the door closed. I could hear the two men inside gasping for air as they began to suffocate, suffocate from the iodine gas. I'm gonna kill that little bitch. <laughs> I could hear him slamming into the now jammed door. Where the fuck is my gun? He's not actually going to. I ran as quickly as my legs could carry me and ducked behind a tree. That was a mistake. Well, at least that got rid of the evidence. They really are that stupid. Eli. I rushed to the red muscle car and opened the door. Eli slid out, hands and legs still bound by zip ties. What the fuck? I felt the rush of adrenaline begin to subside and fell to the ground. Went back against the luster of the car as an extreme fatigue fell over me. I began to shiver. Eli snapped the zip ties off his arms and pulled the few that bound his legs off in one swift motion. What the fuck did you do? I felt my heart still rushing and with bated breath I answered. Ammonia and iodine crystals mix and form nitrogen iodide. Iodide? Contact explosion so sensitive it can be de detonated by alpha particle radiation. It will explode if you touch it. Move it, blow on it, or in those guys' cases, hit it with a pestle. So, how did you survive? That... I pointed towards the boarding trailer. It was caused by one particularly stupid man's decision to discharge a firearm in a dirty, fuel-filled, and iodine-enclosed meth lab. Ha! Ha! Eli began to scream into the empty field. Ah! Ha 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 ha! <laughs> he fell down next to me. He looked as exhausted as I was. We... we gotta get out of here. Not in my head. I don't suppose he left his keys in the glove compartment. Then I remembered. I stood up immediately and began to dig through every crevice of the car until I found a large plastic set bag that... that held the money. I snatched up the bag and turned to Eli. We gotta get out of here. It took us all day to get back to the farm. We had wandered for lost for hours until we had found a road that led back to Somerset. The sun was already setting by the time we got back to the farm. The shrill euphoria of the day had subsided hours ago and had quickly been replaced with the chill, creeping chill of panic. Eli and I wordlessly stepped into the house. What do we do now? We? We? Fuck that shit. I'm out. I'm done. Eli, listen. We just need to lay low. Cops don't know we were there. 
They'll find their cars, the bodies, the lab. Assume those two idiots just blew themselves up trying to cook. They have no way to track her back to us. This, this is crazy. We're fucking killers. Those guys are dead because of us. Eli. It was us or them. They came here with guns to our heads and would have buried us in that field if we didn't do what we did. I... I can't. This is the end, man. The fucking end. I... I... I gotta get high. <laughs> okay. In the main day stupor, Eli pushed into his room and began searching every inch of it for a joint. I let out a sigh. <sighs> Eli, you gotta get a grip. I took the bag of money in hand. It was all I could think to do. I opened it and spilled the content of the bag out on his bed. I began to split the pot, making two piles 50-50. That's when I realized, Eli, I could see the panic in his eyes. This isn't a hundred grand. What? Don't tell me we did all that for nothing, more than the chump changes. This is closer to 200, maybe more. What? This pushed his share almost a hundred thousand dollars closer to him. Yes, whatever you want. You can go anywhere, start over. Be anyone you want to be. Be the person you always wanted to be. I need to think. I turned away and scooped up my half of the money. It never ends this peacefully. Never. Oh well. It'd be nice if it did. I left Eli to his own thoughts and returned to my bedroom. I sat down on the mattress and didn't even think about going to bed. My heart wouldn't stop pounding. My mind raced. Colors now. My phone. I had completely forgotten about it. Now we're busting now. Lyra had been sending me messages all day. Sorry for yesterday. That was hard. I've been thinking. Are you... I scrolled down to my most recent messages. Hey, are you doing okay? Are you still there? I guess you're busy. I wish we could talk. Yes, I stood her up. All I could hear was the beating of my heart. The shock. The fear. The panic. I want to stop. I looked down at my phone. Didn't even remember typing the word. Beach. My legs carried me there. This is where we find out she's an FBI agent and I'm fucked. Even though I was exhausted. Even as my mind began to crack. Not until I was already there. Sitting in the sand, listening to the waves. Pillars now. I heard her soft footsteps in the sand. The fluffy panda? What's going on? Just from her voice I could tell. It had gone from confusion to concern in an instant. Are you okay? The fluffy panda. You don't say anything all day and then th you think... Silence was her answer. She wanted to be mad, but for some reason she couldn't bring herself to be. Why? Why doesn't she hate me? Sat down next to me. What's going on with you? I don't know where to begin. You, you should just leave. I... Tell me anything. It doesn't have to be what's wrong. But tell me something. Turn to look at her. I know it's been a long time since we were kids. And even now, then, I know we weren't friends. But I want you to... I wish you felt like you could tell me anything. I tried to do some good, but I think all I did was make things worse. My face fell into my hands and I felt the stream of tears fell, fall down my face. I... It's okay. You don't have to be strong here. She placed her hand on my shoulder. I'm a coward. I couldn't bring myself to admit even the smallest things. How could I? I don't know. Cooking meth and blowing up two guys isn't very simple. It was my mom. The reason I ran off yesterday. Right before I started high school. My dad passed away. My mom, she just lost it. She couldn't work. She didn't clean or cook or even bathe. She would just stay in her room all day long, sleeping or crying. I had to do everything. Buy groceries, clean the house, cook our meals. 
I even drove myself to school with my learners just to make it on to class on time. Then she started using pills first. I used to get prescriptions from the piece of shit doctor. A quack with a lab coat and a prescription pad. He'd write a script for anything. Then they started cracking down on pills. But by then she was already too addicted to do anything else. So she started buying from dealers, but then pills started getting hard to come by. She would use whatever she could to get her hands on heroin. Most days. I would come home to find her too strung out to do anything but drool into a mattress. I remember hating her so much. I just wanted one day where I could come home and not have to deal with her passed out and pull piss. One day when I could finally be a, when I could just be a teenager. One day when I didn't have to force her to do something as simple as bathe. And then one day I got my wish. I came home. She was dead. OD'd, alone in that filthy room in a pile full of our own vomit. I remember feeling relieved. Like I was living in a nightmare and it was finally over. But then, all that hate I had for her came crashing down on me. Why couldn't I stop her? Why couldn't I have helped her? But in reality, there was nothing I could have done. This place, Somerset, it's not like we could have ever gotten help in a town like this. A tourist trap this, like this place. They never want to spoil their image. And that helplessness tore me apart until there was nothing inside of me but bitterness and hatred and apathy. Hand shifted up to my cheek and she wiped away the stream of tears. I know, I know what it's like to be in that hole. I've been down there before. And I know the way out. Oh. Please say something. There are some people who I've hurt. People like me? Hesitated. Do you remember that? She nodded her head. Maybe that's how it all started. Maybe that was just a stepping stone. For <laughs> Yeah. You throw sand in someone's face and then you're a freaking meth dealer that blows people up. Sure, dude. Yeah, that's that's the gateway right there. <laughs> Throwing sand in people. Bro, okay, sure. The first thing someone told me when I got here was this place wouldn't change me. <laughs> it would just show who I really am. Maybe I've always been this person and now it's just out in the open. I've always been a bastard. I felt her hand slip down my shoulder and interlock with my own. God, my nose is so stuffed up from reading so long. It took me so many years to realize that hating yourself doesn't make the pain go away. You have to learn to forgive yourself. I, I don't think I can come back from the things I've done. I don't think I can forgive myself. He then reached out and kissed me softly on the lips. I forgive you for all those years ago. Oh, nice. <laughs> Gateway. Being a terrible person is throwing sand in somebody's face. But you're going to have to do the rest yourself. We sat there, her hand on, head on my shoulder. Watched the sunset over the horizon. Thank you. Oh, she's not an FBI agent. Did you know that when we were little, I had a huge crush on you? I half laughed at the statement, through my hoarse throat, and watery eyes before nodding my head yes. I... I could guess as much. Did you also know that the, tomorrow the town is having the Midsummer Festival? They're closing off the city center for a private event and the whole town is going to come. No tourists, just locals. I was thinking maybe you could be my date. If... If you want. I let out a soft sigh. My heart finally stopped racing. Maybe Lyra was right. Maybe this wasn't the end. Maybe this could be the beginning. Even after everything that's happened, I can still find reasons. Mm. When I opened the front door, Eli was waiting in the living room. I wordlessly walked in and shut the door. You okay? 
He nodded. I thought about what you said. And after tomorrow, I'm going to leave town. I'll take my money and head out. Find a new life, I guess. Maybe I'll even go to college like you. Psych. We're just going to jail, dude. I thought I could at least attend the Midsummer Festival, say my goodbyes to everyone. We're ditching the old place. What about you? I don't know yet. I think my criminal days are over. Take care of the lab. Get rid of the evidence. You won't have to worry about any of this. Eli then stood. I guess I'll see you tomorrow at the festival, Festival, but if I don't, maybe we'll meet again in another life. Ha, huh, yeah, maybe. Hal stretched my hand and Eli shook it. Thanks for being my, yeah, thanks for being my partner in this life. You wish it was going this happily. Get ready. New life. Do I deserve such a thing? Maybe it's not about a new life. Maybe it's about a better life. Day eight. Let's see if the rooster's back. Day nine. Nope, rooster's still dead. <laughs> oh, there he is. Great. Made it back just in time. I pulled up to the gravel driveway and turned the engine of Eli's truck off. I picked up the yellow envelope that had taken me all morning to put together. I spent hours driving all over the country to every bank in a 30 mile radius, changing $5,000 in cash for their equivalent value in cashier checks. I opened the letters, the letter I had written to my parents. Dear Mom and Dad, I found out a lot of things about Granddad and myself this summer. He had a lot of debt, but also it looks like he was planning to pay it all back. I found a bunch of cashier checks buried under his bed. It turns out he would drive all over the county selling his crops. Sure, dude. I guess he <laughs> didn't trust banks or something. He almost had enough to pay off his debts. But he passed away before he could finish. Since his property was inherited under your name, made sure to enclose all the money in this envelope. Hope to see you again soon. Yes, I'm thinking of staying in Somerset for a while, little while longer. I just want to see if I can scroll this down. Nope. Oh, well, let me click. Did I break it? Okay, thank God. Put the letter down slipped it into the envelope with all the checks before stepping out of the truck. Eli must have left for the festival already. His bags were packed and arranged neatly next to the front door. I placed his car keys on the living room table. I let out a sigh, opening the doors to the garage. <sighs> I took one last look at the lab we had built. It almost felt wrong taking part in such a setup. I unfolded a large black trash bag and began scooping up the glassware into the plastic sack. It took me a solid hour and a almost solid hour and almost half a dozen trash bags to get everything cl cleaned up. Nice. So this was the garage, okay. Or somewhere. I guess I'll have to wait till tomorrow to throw all this stuff away. Probably take it to the dump myself or maybe wait till until tonight. Spread them out amongst public dumpsters. Check my phone. Guess I should get cleaned up and head to, into town. After showering, I put on my put on the nicest shirt and pants that I had brought with me. Even then, it was nothing fancy. I looked down at my phone. It was Lyra. Where do we meet? I can come over. Hmm. It's a bit ripe here, with all the mirror. General store? Sounds good. See you there, winky face. Oh, we did it, boys. We're going to jail. I let out a deep breath, tucked the envelope into my back pocket, and walked out the front door. Handmade pasta is spelled wrong. Dude, come on. Oh, that's funny. The festival was already in full swing. I do love handmade pasta. Didn't need a map, I see. I even tied my own shoes. <laughs> she slipped her hand into my own. What should we do first? I actually need to mail a letter first. Then I'm free for the rest of the day. Who's it to? My parents, just letting them know what's been going on. Well then, get a move on. I know it's a solstice, but the sun's not going to keep forever. Hand in hand, we walked to the small PBO box that sat in front of the general store. I slipped the envelope into the box and slid the opening close. All done. My money! <laughs> oh, damn. Good. 
Come on. He then pulled me away from the mailbox into the city square. A variety of activities had been set up for the town to partake in. From the big potluck to a band playing soft folk music to a few carnival games for the kids. What should we do? Dance? Come on, let's dance. Dance? Without a word of warning or a moment to acknowledge my cry of protest, she pulled me away. Lyra dragged me towards the plaza where a small band was playing music. She pulled herself closer to my chest and slipped my hand onto her waist. I began to whisper through grit teeth. Ira, I don't know how to dance. It's nonsense, it's easy. She began to lead me back and forth to the soft rhythm of the music. You just listen to the music and let your heart do the rest. For the moment we stood there hand in hand, moving to the sound of the music and became lost in fantasy. She pulled herself closer, resting her head on my chest as we motioned back and forth to the melody of music. Maybe there is life, a better life after all of this. Then she suddenly pulled away. I watched as she threw her arms into the air, laughing as she spun herself up to the sound of the music. With a large smile on her face, she took my hand and led me back to the town square. Carnival game. Look! He pointed to the small carnival game stand that had been set up to the, off to the side of the festival. He quickly pulled me towards the small air rifle game. The man running the stand turned and looked at me. Howdy, buddy. Hit all the targets you can. You can win a stuffed rabbit for your girlfriend. He didn't deny the premise. How much? Five dollars. Five? Is there some shortage of stuffed rabbits I didn't read about? It's not about the price of the thing. It's about the valor. The battle-hardened victory that you will win to seize this here prize. You may think this is a mere stuffed bunny. It isn't worth five bucks, but you're wrong. It's more than a stuff bunny. It's a priceless memento of the battle you fought for your lady here. I looked at him with a raised frown. He makes a good point. I opened my wallet. I realized all I had was 50 and 100 dollar bills. Oh, all I have are 50s. Lyra opened her purse and placed a 10 dollar bill on the table. The man handed me the air rifle. The target started moving and I fired at the first. I missed. I fired again and again, but only managed to hit one of the targets. Well, your girl fronted you a chance, so I guess that gives you another chance. Let me try. I handed her the air rifle. Whoa well, then, little messy, let's see what you got. We started up the game again. With her first three shots, she hit each target dead soon. God damn it, she is an FBI agent with fucked. How? You don't aim at the targets, you aim where the target is going. Well then, mister, looks like your girlfriend won you a stuffed rabbit. I took the stuffed animal in my hand and returned, and Lyra returned the air rifle with a devilish smile on her face. So you're awfully handy with a rifle. Makes me wonder what else I don't know about you. I grew up in the country. It'd be weirder if I wasn't good with a gun. <laughs> and considering how many trips you took to the farm, I'm surprised how awful you are with one. Maybe I can give you a private lesson someday. I'll hold you to that. Please, God, don't let it be FBI. Please. I slipped the stuffed rabbit into my back pocket, took my hand, and led me away from the stand. What should we do? Sit with Lyra. Lyra stretched out her arms and let out a small yawn. <sighs> Let's sit down for a bit. I nodded my head, and she led me to a big fountain in the middle of town. We sat down on the edge of the marble and she let out a long sigh. You okay? I... Well, it's nice to get away from all the crowds. I, well... You don't like crowds, do you? No. I don't know why, but all the noise, all the eyes, being the center of it all, it always makes me nervous. That's what I like about my job. Most of the time, I get to work in peace. You never did tell me what you do. Oh, stop. You're going to spoil the mood if I have to start in on office politics. Oh, fuck, dude. So you have a desk job? She rolled her eyes. Some days I get to be... Oh, fuck. I get to be out and about. Other days, paperwork. Lots of, pa lots of paperwork. She let out a sigh and dipped her hand in the fountain. Some days, I wish I could give it, just give it all up. 
then without warning. She flicked her hand at me, splashing a small wave of water from the fountain on me. You're gonna regret that. Scooped up a handful of water. Don't you dare. I splashed a small wave at her. But she let out a small laugh as she tried to dodge it. We went back and forth splashing each other with water, all the while laughing like we were kids again. And in that moment, I realized how much attention we were drawing on ourselves. I felt a creeping chill of fear grip me as I remember what she had told me just a moment ago. Everyone was looking at us. But in that moment, Lyra was having too much fun to realize just how many glares we were attracting. And I never wanted to take that away from her. Okay, okay. I give up. In one final desperate attack, she pulled her arms around me, making sure I observed the brunt of her white, already white clothes. Hand in hand, we walked back to the center of town. Luckily, it was a hot summer day and we dried out quickly. What should we do? Leave. Getting late. God, I hope I'm right. Um, I mean, hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I'm getting a little tired. Maybe we should head out. Where to? Hmm. You know, I've never actually seen the farm. Well, I've seen it, but I've never been there. Like, I'd like to see what you've been doing all summer. But no. Call it an educational curiosity. You sure? It's just a lot of dirt and manure. And I'm sure it will be the most education dirt and manure I'll ever see. I'm sure it will be educational for both of us. Oh, we're so fucked! No, god damn it. Oh, fuck, dude. You just gave me that wink. Oh, fuck. I'm not happy about this, bro. The sun was starting to set as we approached the farmhouse. This is why I can't do illegal shit. I'm too paranoid, boy. So, this is the old place? He eyed the patch of dirt Eli and I had dug out just a few weeks ago. I guess the farming took a back seat. Squeeze your hand. I guess I found something a little more important. Come on. Just for me forward with a tilt of her head. I want to see the, the inside. It's all so rustic. Makes me miss the old cabin we had by the beach. I can't believe you had all this space to yourself. Where's Eli? I wonder how he's doing. Oh. His bags were here this morning and his truck wasn't in the driveway. I think he left already. Left? Yeah, he decided he wanted to get out of Somerset. I'm sure wherever he is, he's doing just fine. I guess this means we have the house to ourselves. We walked over to the kitchen table and sat in one of the old wooden chairs. She let out a long yawn, outstretching her arms as she laid her head on the table. I sat down in the chair next to her and she smiled at me. Day was... nice. Thank you, the fluffy panda. For a day like this, thank you too. What you did for me yesterday. I don't know where I would be if you hadn't come up and come and found me. And... I owe you more than you can ever understand. She turned and looked up at me, before pulling herself closer and kissing me softly on the lips. I never told anyone about my mom. I kept it to myself, bottled up inside. Today was the first day I felt free. I owe you that, so I'd say we're even. We sat there for a moment in silence, her head resting on my shoulder. Today was the perfect day. She took my hand in her own. I wanted to have the, a perfect ending. She led me to the bedroom. Okay. Or it's, this is where we either have the happy ending or the bad ending. Oh, the, the days have skipped. Oh, God, did we make it? Oh, thank God. Wait, am I in jail? <laughs> days went by really fast. No, I'm still at the... That was my rooster. I'm safe. Thank God. Thank God. I rolled out of bed. Gotta get going. She turned to face me. Have another good day. Oh, thank God, dude. Oh, that was stressing me the fuck out. Weed the patch. Spent the next hour pulling out weeds that started to seem to spring endlessly in every direction. I remember the first time I did this. At first, the endless weeds were daunting, and the fact that they just reappeared the next day was infuriating. This is bullshit. This right here is bullshit. The more I worked over these months, 
The more I came to see the weeds as a comforting expectation, sure, dude. Start a new patch. Season is almost over. Better clear a new patch for the next season. Start by clearing out the larger shrubs and that few head-sized rocks. I tilled the open area and began to hoe out the holes for the seeds. After a few hours, I had the whole patch tilled out, ready to seed in the future. Harvest ripe fruit. Better get the right fruit ready for delivery. I tear away the th heavy thick stems and pulled the fresh melons into a pile. After getting enough for the day's delivery, I made sure everything in the truck was ready. I hauled the heavy summer melons into the back of my truck and into town. Better start the deliveries for the day. Oh, we fucking made it, boys. I think. I hope. Oh, the Fluffy Panda! Are you here with the delivery? Yep, last one of the day. You need any help loading them in? You're too kind, dear. These old bones aren't what they used to be. No problem. All done. Thank you, dear. Here's your payment for the summer melons. I took the money in hand. Thank you. Well, what do you think you'll plan for the fall? I'm not sure yet. Any suggestions? Pumpkins are always popular with the kids. Fuck pumpkins, they're the worst thing to grow ever. They rot too fast, and you can't tell they rotted until you usually touch them. They usually rot from the bottom, and they grow thorns on their freaking stems, bro. I hate pumpkins, they're the worst. We could run a special together for the town festival in October. Sounds like a plan. Got to get back to the farm. Oh, don't let my rambling keep you. Oh, pumpkins, bro. While I'm here, I should visit the bank. As I made my way to the front door of the great marble building, I met a familiar face. Ah, oh, the Fluffy Panda. Can I help you with something? I'm here with this week's payment on the farm. Ah, oh, of course. I can help you with that. I handed him the cash for this week's deposit. I took the money in hand. The bank would like to thank you for your continued patronage. A few more months and the small business loan should be paid off. A few more months. That'll be the day to celebrate for sure. I'll let you get back to work. Yes, thank you. Have a good day. I'll need to start expanding soon. Getting ready for fall. Weeding, replanting, endless. But it's all worth it when I get to walk through that door. I step through the door. She's already home, asleep with her head down on the kitchen table. I picked the blanket off the couch and threw it over her shoulders. Oh, thank God, dude. She's not... Uh, I'm wondering why they kept her job a secret for so long, though. They worked you too hard there. Spoken ass. Soft, half-awake tone. Oof. I wouldn't want it any other way. I get to make a difference. I get to do good. Well, I think you... No. This isn't right. You never told me. Oh, please! Is this... a dream? Maybe. But even so, I wonder if we could stay like this forward. Forever? On this farm. We can make it into a real home. I wonder if we could find a new life here. A better life. But is this real? Oh, please God, don't do it to me, game. Could this be anything more than a dream? Sometimes all you need is a dream. Look at everything we have here. What more could you need? Ah, uh, save. We'll do both endings. I want to stay in the dream. We'll stay in the dream second because we'll do the bad ending first. Oh, bro. Oh, dude. I think I called it. Oh my god. This might be like my number one fear in life, bro. I was rocked awake and shot up in an instant. I was in my bedroom. That dream. And everything came back to me. Festival in town. Coming back here with Lyra. Lyra? Gone? Impression in the bed where she had lain just an hour ago was all that remained. What was that? I came from the garage. I threw on my clothes and made for the garage.
Eli, what's going on? Then I saw her. Lyra standing against a shelf, holding her head, a thin layer of blood trickled down her head. Just feet away from Eli was holding the broken half of a glass flask in his hand. On the floor next to Lyra's purse was a small handgun. I went for the gun in an instant. What the fuck is going on here? I turned the gun towards Eli. You stay the fuck away from her, Eli. Wait, wait. You don't understand. Look around. Lyra, are you okay? I'm... I'm... Look around, you idiot. She knows. I turned towards the pla large plastic trash bags that I had filled with our, all our chemistry, all our old chemistry equipment. They had been opened and some of the contents spilled around the room. Look in her purse. Shut up. I'm not falling for it, bro. Do it. I hid the handbag on the ground and kept the gun trailed on him as I picked up the bag. I found it almost instantly. A silver badge with the- I freaking knew it! With the letters DDE and in big embroidered letters. I read the words over and over again, hoping somehow they would change. Department of Drug Enforcement. Below it was an identification card and clear as the day an image of her face with the word special agent. She's a fucking narc! What do you think happened? She pulled her gun on me. No. Lyra. I'm sorry I didn't tell you sooner. I'm sorry I didn't. I didn't do this on purpose. But, please believe me, it wasn't on purpose. Yes, it was. But I had to check that part of my mind, the part that doesn't let things be good. Shoot her. No. He's a fucking fed, you idiot. There's no way we walk away from here from this that doesn't end with her in a hole. Say it again and I'll kill you. I turned to face her. I could tell. You could see the desperation in my eyes. She was fearless. Please, Lyra, we could. He's right, the fluffy panda. Just promise me, whatever happens, you'll learn to live. In jail? Do what you have to do. I turned back to her. Uh, oh, let's do the jail ending first, get that out of the way. I can't do it. I dropped the gun and hit it on the ground with a small metal tang. I, I can't do it. Arrest me. I'll confess everything. I can never hurt you. Not again. Never again. Heard him go for it. Ooh. Well, he's shooting everybody, I guess. He dropped a gun with a metallic clunk. It landed just a few feet away. I... I... I reached out and held her face. I think I started to scream. I know I started to cry. But everything else was lost in a dull haze, haze of rage. Pick up the gun. Well, God, we're getting so many endings at the end of the game. Pick up the gun. It was just feet from my hand. I went for it. Wait! <laughs> the vice gets shot. And he hit the ground. It's like that one uh, Saturday Night Live skit where they're like reading that letter and everybody that reads the letter ends up shooting each other. In the end, I guess the old man's tools had some use after all. It all makes sense. Where you began and where you ended. Your mom and the path you chose in life. Guess I never did apologize for all those years ago. I told y'all. I knew it. Because in the end, you always were the one who paid the price. I, Lyra, for everything. But more than anything, regret never telling you. Dull haze. The ac acrid smell. Floor soaked wet with chemicals. Hopefully it'll be quick. One big fireball. Maybe in another life, I'll get to tell her face to face. Sorry. We're not setting ourselves on fire, are we? <laughs> well, that doesn't sound like the kind of explosion you survive. The end. Alright. We're going to get the other endings as well, but I'll let the credits play first if there are credits. 
Created by Alex Braden, maybe? Credits, backgrounds by Necrom U on Fiverr. Characters, Rizuchi on Fiverr. Illustrations, Duwa Fabari and Rizuchi on Fiverr. Pixel art, Alex Braden writing, Alex Braden programming, Alex Braden low pipe. Not reading all the music people, but great job. Hopefully you won't copyright ID claim me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this uh, game has like a donation page. I'm going to donate to it because I thought it was a pretty good game. Even though it was predictable, I knew I knew everything that was going to happen. Uh, bro, I'll watch too much crime stuff. That'd be so, that would suck so bad to be like, uh, that's why I can't do illegal things. Everyone at. But yeah. I think it's like $5 donation. I'll do that. Private donation, just paying them for the game. They like, if you want it for free, you can get it for free. And if you want, they have like a $5 version that doesn't really add anything, but just to support them, I guess. All right, let's do the other endings. Oh, it closed itself. Bro, that was awful. <laughs> oh, bruh. I mean, at least I didn't go to jail, I guess, in that ending. It was a lot like Breaking Bad, though, wasn't it? A lot like Breaking Bad. We'll read the bow to after we get the other endings. Eli ran for it, looking like he was about to puke. I heard the slam of the door, and then the revving of his truck as he sped away. Oh wait, is this the same ending? Oh wait, that's different. Give me another life, I'll get to tell her. Blow it out, we dropped the match last time. Sorry. My hand began to shudder. I watched the flicker of the flame as it began to eat down on the wooden shaft of the match. Why can't I do it? Cowardice? Or is it something else? I don't I remember. It took me so many years to realize that hating yourself doesn't make the pain go away. You have to learn to forgive yourself. Is that why? Is that what you would want? Can I really be forgiven even for this? I have to. I have to find reasons. Keep living. Otherwise, it all really would have meant nothing. <laughs> the end. Alright. Hopefully I can love when the credits start. And then I'll drop the match too, just to make sure it's not different. But I don't think it will be. Uh, load? Oh, hey, oh, where's the load button? Oh, these don't work. We did get music this time. Let's listen to the music. Thank you for making it. Did it seem like the credits went faster that time or nah? Maybe it's because I was reading last time. Alright, let's just get ready to pull the game back up because it's about to close itself. These buttons stop working though. That's kind of unfortunate. Oh wait, that's different. Okay. I guess the first one I got was like the worst ending. Riding the bus, dude. Press any key to quit. Or load. Oh, sick. It only closes the game if you do the really bad ending. Alright. Let's see if there's anything after, just to make sure. I want to make sure I get all the endings that I can. Oof, dude. Yeah, it looks the same. I ain't got no music on this one. Oh, let's let it close itself. Just 
Oh, dang, dude. Oof. I like the ending music on the last one, though. Hopefully it doesn't get me copyright ID claimed. But I liked it. Or struck. Even worse, struck. Getting copyright struck would suck. Again. I'll never forgive the Japanese. As Joseph Joestar said. Bro, I told you she was a cop, though. I knew it. Yeah, that one just closed the same ending. Okay. I might just edit that ending out since it was exactly the same. You just drop the match and you get the option to drop the match. I'll probably edit that one out. All right. I think we only got a few more endings left to do. <laughs>
Like I said, on Steam you can donate to these guys if you want for $4.99. I thought the game was pretty great. Although predictable. It's not real. Ah, oh, hell. Don't you care about that? No. Oh, well, that's the ending. Alright, guys. Thanks for watching, as always. Bye!